because I can, really. That is super disturbing. Never do that again. This is definitely going to be a sleeves up video. Hi guys, it's Leanne and I am here today to do the most pure and tender tag I have ever done on this channel before. I think there will probably be more nice Leanne footage in this one video than there will be in any other content on my channel. It's not, it's not really my brand. That's all I'm saying. This is the Booktube Darlings tag. And I'm not gonna lie, as soon as I saw who had uploaded this tag and who had tagged me in it, I was like, I'm gonna need a tissue because I'm a cry. And I cried. The girl is like secretly deep, 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 deep down, deep down actually a little bit of a soft squishy person. Essentially this tag is a series of questions which encourages us to shout out our fellow booktubers. Shout outs not call outs people. Remember my booktube philosophy. Read books, glee about happy things and don't be a dick. So on that note the first question is going to be a bit of a disappointment. It is White Rabbit and that is what booktuber first introduced you to the wonderful world of booktube and I am honestly going to say I have no freaking idea. Like many other people I was just tootling around on YouTube and I stumbled over a bunch, a bunch of people who were just talking about books and I was like where is this magical nirvana and why am I not there already? I think three of the first people that I ever actually left comments for were my dear friend Vanessa at Jaboski, Jean at Jean's Bookish Thoughts and maybe, maybe Cece at Problems of a Book Nerd. I think Cece started the year before me because I'm old in terms of booktube now guys. January was my fifth booktube anniversary. Hello cat. If you're gonna stick your tail in my camera you at least need to be sociable for the camera. No? Okay then, rude. Question two is underrated. Which booktuber deserves way more subscribers than they've got? I didn't even need to think about this one. It is absolutely Rachel at the Shades of Orange. This lady like produced booktube content when she was ready to pop. She did not let anything get in the way of her booktube productivity. Rachel reads primarily horror and thrillers and it's funny because I can kind of tell the mark of somebody who has an amazing style of delivery when they don't have the same tastes and I mean we, we both like horror and we both like thrillers but Rachel likes body horror and I prefer sort of like psychological horror and Rachel prefers sort of slashery thrillers and I prefer more like deep diving murky make you feel icky thrillers but despite that I never miss a video, I come back again and again and again. And just every now and again there's like one book that the two of us will be like, yes! And that is very gratifying. Also, her setup looks like she is a professional cleaner. It's, it's atmospheric and it's sleek and chic and mm, I love her. The third question is auto watch. Which booktuber do you drop? absolutely everything for and go and watch their video as soon as it's published. So here's the thing guys, I've told you a hundred times I am terrible with comments because they give me masses of anxiety and self-doubt and that's all me and none of that is you. So just in the same way that I struggle to articulate myself in my own comment section, I struggle to articulate myself in everybody else's. So please, <laughs> Believe me when I say, I drop things for a lot of people's videos. I religiously watch people's videos. Everybody that I mention on this tag, specifically, obviously, I drop everything for their videos. I watch a hell of a lot more than I comment and I'm trying, I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to even just leave like a little love heart and be like, I watched this and it was fabulous, but I'm bad at it. Disclaimers out of the way, it's not very like me to give disclaimers, but disclaimers out of the way. The person who most recently I have dropped everything for every time there's an upload is Emma from Drinking By Her Shelves. Drinking By My Shelves. Why do I screw that up every time? Mm. 
five years. I still, I still suck. Emma is sassy and she's irreverent and she is unashamedly her. She is not afraid to give her exact, exact feelings on a book and that really appeals to me as a human. And one of the marks of how much I trust her is that I continually pick up books that she recommends to me and I would say we've got about a sort of 40, whatever the other percentage is, success rate. I did show this Venn diagram very recently. But it doesn't matter how many misses we have, I'm still going to pick up everything that she recommends because she is so freaking smart and she does it while drinking alcohol and I don't know how she does it and I hate her a little bit for it, but like in a very like true friendship way. The fourth question has me a little bit stumped. It is twinning. What booktuber shares almost all of the same reading tastes as you. You see, there are so many people who like one of the genres that I like or a piece of one of the bigger genres that I like. There are people who I watch who love thrillers but then primarily read, I don't know, anything that's not a thriller. There are people that I watch who primarily read fantasy and don't ever pick up anything set in the real world. I, and I, I, I don't feel like there's much crossover. I guess Rachel and April and Emma. See then there's like, there's so many other people who, uh, I don't know. So uh, if you happen to like thrillers, cosy mysteries, uh, detest detective fiction in, in all its glory, uh, have a definite penchant for fantasy, do like to dip your toe into urban fantasy, have an odd sort of antagonistic relationship with literary fiction, like ghosts, uh, enjoy place as character and like creepy child narrators, just apply below to be my friend. The joining standards are low. Please be my friend. Question five is boss. What booktuber do you look up to the most? And I have two different wonderful ladies for two completely different reasons. The first lady is the inimitable Olive from A Book Olive. Girl is just everything goals. Motivation goals, lipstick goals, uh, amount red goals, non-fiction hardcore goals, don't give a shit goals. Again, she is another person who is so unashamedly her. She is just mm. She owns everything that she does and she only makes content that she absolutely loves. And I think that's something every one of us is guilty of at some point on booktube is making some videos that we don't necessarily enjoy tons and tons but we know that our viewers will or we know that they're popular and trending at the time and that's that's normal that's what you do in any social media platform it's it's necessary almost but i feel like olive doesn't do that ever i feel like she only ever makes videos that she's intensely passionate about and i just I admire that so much. More recently, in sort of the last year or so, I have just kind of said, screw it, I'm, I'm gonna do what brings me joy. I'm gonna talk about all of the weird niche things that I like to talk about and that's why you're seeing more new series start on my channel recently and you're seeing some more tags pop up and I changed my wrap up format to tops and bottoms because I can't be bothered talking about the books in the middle that were just okay. And I think the longer you are on booktube and social media, the more that you manage to kind of frame your channel as like a part of you as opposed to like just a part of the community. And the other amazing, amazing bubbly little bean that I love to pieces is Chelsea from Chelsea Dolling Reads. I don't know whether I want to be Chelsea or whether I want to be like Chelsea's sister. Not her best friend because I feel like, I feel like you need, <laughs> you need a certain level of niceness to be best friends. I, I, more sisters because I feel like we would be incredibly honest with each other about all the things all the time and we would take no crap but I also think we would argue passionately about things a lot. Oh wait, that is what I do with my best friend. Sorry Kirsty. But in amongst all of this passion and sass, Chelsea is just so purely lovely. She is almost always upbeat even when she struggles with things. She is just if I'm down, 
I have a set of like three booktubers whose videos that I watch and Chelsea is always on the list. The next question is bestie and I should have brought a tissue to talk about this subject. It's which booktuber are you or would you genuinely like to become friends with? And this is why being tagged in this and being talked about in April's original tag for this just made me so emotional because I love April. April from Getting Who Go With It is just one of the kindest, most placid human beings that I know and I would, if there was ever the possibility, ever the possibility of there being just a five minute flight to just pop around every day and have coffee, yeah I did say every day I'm that friend, then I would, I absolutely would because she, she shares parts of herself online that I struggle to share just with my friends and family or admit to and her IVF journey and how honest she has managed to be about that and amongst still talking about books and lifestyle and just being so completely raw and so completely down to earth and honest, so brutally honest about how she feels, I feel like has started to heal me a little bit when it comes to my own infertility and my choices surrounding that. I've been pretty vocal in the past about the fact that I don't want kids and it annoys the crap out of me when people presume that, you know, I am 32 now and so I should be worrying about that. Because of course I think about it every day because that's society. And April went through a point where she didn't know whether that was going to happen for her and she had to kind of look at how she framed herself as a human being and the grace and courage that she showed throughout that whole thing is just... I would be honoured to consider her a friend for life. <coughs> now that I've done sniffing off camera, <coughs> let's do the next question. The next question is bookcase envy. Whose book collection or bookshelves or book setup do you envy the most? And without a single shadow of a doubt, this is Steph at Novelty Corner. She has the most beautiful <laughs> white bookshelves with glass fronts. I never thought I would ever want my books to be behind any kind of anything, to be obscured at all, but there is just something so freaking Marie Kondo, like zen filled with completeness about just the, the beautifully cleaned glass and all of the shinies behind it and just knowing that you're gonna open that up and you're gonna just smell books. Oh, I want Steph's bookshelves so badly. Question eight is MIA, which booktuber hasn't made a video in a while or has left booktube and you really, really miss and yeah, it's it's gonna be Vanessa at Chaboski. Vanessa is another one of these people who's Oh, this sounds so hippy dippy but whose like aura I just really enjoy. I just find the way that she talks about books so articulate and yet at the same time so unhurried and unbothered by other people's opinions of what she should and shouldn't read and should and shouldn't enjoy. I love that she is just so like in her own lane and I her reading tastes are just so diverse that you never know what she's going to show in her next video and I, I really love that and I'm super super sad that she has taken a um, semi-permanent leave of absence from booktube but as I said Vanessa had been on booktube um, a year or two before I had and so I guess sometimes there is a threshold for people who sometimes people's lives move on, people get married, they maybe want to have kids and you know, like their other things take priority and we still talk and we still Christmas card and we still owe each other a coffee but yeah I miss her face, I miss, I miss her popping up in my feed. Question 9 is newbie, which booktube newbie are you excited about and this is without a doubt Samantha at Missy May's Reading Nook. Now I shouted out Samantha 
on Instagram, I think, because when I found her, she had like 23 subscribers and I have to excuse me? Who, who decides these things? How do I make people sign up? Before I even go into her content, her hair is bomb. She has got this lady boss streak and I want it like I, I, I want it. She just looks so put together every time she turns on the camera and mm, I'm wearing cat ears and a jumper which may or may not have crisp crumbs embedded in it. I can't tell. Oh, hairs. When I'm looking for a new booktuber, and I have been recently, I have been, a, a lot of people have been taking hiatuses and things and so I've been like, okay, I have more time, please link me to more people that you love and this tag huh, has been brilliant for that. However, when I discovered Samantha, I did the, the true and tested test of, of new channels. In the first 10 seconds, can you get me interested and can you make me laugh? I want to smile in the first 10 seconds. If I don't, I'm leaving. That test, she passed. She passed with flying colours. I was grinning by the time I was a minute in, I had hit the subscribe button. Her smile is utterly infectious. She reads a huge list of different things and she's quite carefree about her TBR. Sure, she makes a TBR and sure, it's really hot in here. I'm getting very passionate in this jumper. She makes a TBR and yeah, she talks to you about it and like everybody else, she's like, oh crap, I need to get this book back to the library or whatever. But she just also has this sort of air of, eh, it's fine, it's fine, it's fun, it's books. And I love that. I just... I love it. And she also does that other thing that I love where she reads a lot of the same books as me and like the thriller genre, but she also reads tons of other stuff that I'd never heard about. So go and subscribe. Run, don't walk. And of course, the last question is who do you tag? I am going to tag three wonderful ladies who I also think that you should check out with much haste. And they are Jenny from Jenny King, Chelsea from Chelsea Palmer, who by the way is literally a new gem find of mine and I am addicted. And the ever effervescent Nicole from A Beautiful Chaos of Books whose lipstick game I envy in practically every... I mean if, if I ever get a dartboard in here, not that I'm going to because I have no depth perception and I would hurt the books, but if I ever get a dartboard in here I might have Nicole's, just Nicole's lips on it because I will never, I will never achieve that. I will never achieve what she achieves. And I'm a hella salty about it. But I'm still watching because girl is fabulous. Personally, I'm off to have my first cup of tea in my new plant friend mug and uh, <laughs> using my new unicorn bookmark. Because uh, you know when you, you, you're shouting people out, uh, a channel that isn't a booktube channel that I just, I think you should all be watching anyway, is just Ellis from Ellis Jade, who runs the wonderful store Pass an Elixir. Loads of you have been asking recently where I have got my potion pin from and you know tons of other things that I've shown on my channel, mugs and things and it, it, pretty much all of it's all of it's from Ellis and she's just she's a gem of a human being. She's a little ray of sunlight in an otherwise very cloudy internet sometimes. So uh, yeah if you if you're into you know creative things and studio vlogs and stuff like that like bugger on off over to Ellis's channel at after I mean watch to the end but then go because she's great Ugh. I've woken you up for this haven't I I'm a terrible terrible mother but I'm afraid it it has to be done has to be done <laughs> fair play dude fair play Not you. You have to stay with me. You live here. Oh. Okay, goodbye. Freaking rude people.